Well, and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of Mind Over Money, where the show where we talk about ways on how meditation, yoga, and behavioral science can help you become an efficient trader, investor, and a better human being. Now, my name is Shadhuzan, and then today we have with us a very special guest, uh, Tapan Singh, who is MD, CEO, Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. Now, Tapan has a rich experience in the insurance industry of more than thirty years. He has been Bajaj. He has been with Bajaj Alliance General Insurance for over twenty years, and is the company's MD. And CEO for about ten years now. Now, customer obsession and passion to do good for people are what drives Tapan and his success in the industry. Now, without further delay, let me quickly invite the man himself. Welcome to the show, Tapan. Thank you, Shridhar. My honor to be here with you. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Now, uh, you know, let me just quickly come to the first question. Now, with more than two decades or three decades of experience, uh, you know, under your belt, and majority of it, it was spent in the leadership position. So, how does a leader stay calm when there is so much happening around? Okay, so if you look at any storm, Shridhar, the center of the storm is always calm. You no, know? the leader should be the center, you no, know, of the storm because then he can see very, very clearly. know what is happening and what he should do so if he gets embroiled in the storm itself then the leader will not be able to pull the company situation or no out of the storm or crisis no mm. so you have always to be in a place where you can see things very clearly you know so it's like that no let's say if you if you have to pull somebody out of uh, the floods or you no know, out of a hurricane and you also know become part of it then you can't so you have to just be a bit out of it so over time like it is not that it comes naturally over time you handle so many crises mm-hmm. that you learn that when you become part of the crisis it's difficult for you to know be able to solve it so you have to understand how to be calm and how to know try and know uh, just be a bit away so you see very clearly and then take action and stop you know and step by step solve it out i think that is what it is so you, there's no option for the leader he, he or she has to be in that place of no where his mind is very calm to see how how he or she can no pull this through absolutely and any techniques that you use you know any meditation or uh, you know yoga that really uh, helps you or aids you in uh, uh, maintaining that calm process whichever situation that you are so there are two things to it which first and foremost is from every incident you no know, it's not that from day zero we would be like that you would make mistakes you would be you no know, drawn to storm or you would drawn to controversy or somebody say something you would get irritated you no know? so it's perfectly fine it's, it's human but then after it is over step back um, look at it and think what could you have done differently you no know? so every day before i go to sleep i do this you know? in the day the things which if i feel did not work out the way i thought it would i step back and think what could i have done differently so i don't say it's wrong or right i just think you no know? so over time the mind gets trained to see how to do things differently from what you have done that is one training that you do to your mind the second is that uh, meditation does help it's a very strong uh, you no know, uh, like a lot of us go to gym yes. when you go to gym uh, let's say in about 5 uh, months 6 months time we get muscles and all then we show people that what muscles and start wearing tight t-shirts and start showing muscles but when you do the gym for your mind those muscles are that what only you can feel no you can't like wear tight t-shirt say no i have built up my you know mental no mental health <laughs> mental muscle, muscle. <laughs> mental muscle yeah right. so meditation is like going to the gym for your mind no mm-hmm. like you go to gym for your body yes sir is a combination of two you have to know try and see how do you keep on building your you no know, mental strength and third is that um, even if you fail in spite of you know the best of thought intentions you don't feel bad about it no it is just again you step back and look at it and then again no be prepared the storm keeps on coming it is not that it happens only once no it is and and the more senior you become the more storms you see no at a higher frequency so i think it's always a good learning and that's why you keep on no, building it up with it right in fact rightly put there and you also stressed on happiness at work uh, in life and wherever you go so why is you know happy or being happy so important especially at this point in time Uh, you know we've seen uh, one bit of crisis around what covid and uh, you know things keep on happening on the on the jobs front as well so happiness at work i i really like that concept yes so it actually is it is because if you look at it uh, from time to turn over 23 24 you start working 
and you work up to 60, 65, you know, which means that your entire youth, the best years of your life, you spend working. I tell my people, let's say you are working and you only come to work because salary that gets paid and you require that money to you know, bring up a family, you know, uh, to have some, you know, uh, buy a car or a house. And so for that, you are putting yourself to misery every day, going to work so that you can just get some money so you can live a you know, life. You know? And then one day it gets over. You're 60 or 65 and then you retire. And then look back, then you've not lived a life at all, no. So I tell people that you should be very cautious on this, that do you really enjoy your work? Are you happy at work? Mm. If you're not, you'll not have a very good life. That's an unfortunate part of it, no? So it is not something that you should think that I can be happy anywhere else because uh, I think two third of your waking time, you are spending at work, no? And two third of your life and your full youth, you're spending at work, no? If that is not where you can feel happy, then you better think about it because then you want to have a very, very sad life. That is why I know I insist that, no, figure out, no, why are you not happy or what can be done to make you happy or is the profession wrong or is the workplace wrong, no? And what is that, no, can you collectively improve so that mm -hmm. you feel happy coming to work? That's the philosophy behind this strategy. No, definitely. In fact, we want, we urge more and more leaders to come forward and, uh, uh, you know, imbibe this concept of happiness at work. And also, uh, uh, you know, connecting with this question, do you, do you also do any workshops uh, at work for employees so that they can stay mentally fit? Okay, two, three things that I personally do and I encourage people to do is that, let's say when I walk down, normally I love, no, when I get some time, I walk down my office or whichever office I go to and walk down. And if I don't find somebody, no, smiling or looking happy, I stop and have a conversation, no. See, you, you would figure out, no, if people are not happy, no. And then you have a conversation. And then I think in, over time, as stress travels, they open up to you. Then you figure out, okay, no, uh, how can we, no, uh, be of assistance or how can we of help to people, no? And how can we, no, uh, see that they, no, uh, overcome the crisis they're in or whatever. So that is the first thing that, no, we should always do. So it's, it's a regular thing, not like you do a workshop once a year and your duty is over, no. It's, it's something that you have to live by as every day, every moment, you know. And as more and more leaders do that, I think then the culture of the company becomes in a way that people are taking care of each other. And they stop by, what is the harm? You stop by, ask somebody, all well, no? Right. There's no harm, no? you stop by and ask. So first and foremost, this is what we insist upon. Second, obviously, we have a strong HR team. We do workshops, we do, you know, like uh, uh, conversations, we have you know, a discussion forum. So those are the normal things that you know, any good organization would be doing. But this is what I thought, uh, since you're speaking to me, as a mm -hmm. culture can build it up. While we walk, you know, while we go down, why should we, you know, at that point in time, carry our stresses around? At least, you know, speak to some people, you know, stop by, smile at people, ask them some questions. They still build in a huge culture in which you'll figure out very early if things are going wrong with anybody or with the organization or with the culture of your company. Right. In fact, uh, you know, these small, small touch points uh, are, uh, you know, are the signs of, a, of a being a great leader and a big leader. So, yeah, that's up to you. Well, on that note, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Singh, for your time today. Well, that's all for now. But do stay long on to edmarkets.com for more on news, business and economy. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.